Have you ever searched for something online, but you could not remember the exact words? Maybe you typed movies about a sad dog, and somehow your streaming service knew you meant Marley and me. Or how does a music app suggest a song you have never heard of that perfectly matches your vibe? This is not magic. It is the power of a revolutionary piece of technology, the Vector Database. First, to understand why Vector Databases are so special, we need to look at the old way. For decades, most databases have worked like meticulous librarians, storing information in neat rows and columns. This is a relational database, and it is fantastic at finding exact matches. But it cannot grasp context, synonyms, or abstract ideas, a system of perfect recall but zero understanding. This is where vector databases change the game. They are built on the concept that anything can be turned into a list of numbers. An AI model, called an embedding model, reads a piece of data and converts it into a vector with hundreds of dimensions. The magic is this, similar items will have similar vectors, creating a high dimensional meaning space. So the vector for cat will be extremely close to kitten, but much further from the vector for car. So how does a vector database actually use this? It is a three-step process. First is embedding. As you add data to the database, it stores the vector representation of that data. Second is indexing. If you had to compare your search to every single vector, it would be incredibly slow. Vector databases use algorithms like a NN, which stands for approximate nearest neighbor. Think of it like a map organized by continent, then country, then city, to find the right neighborhood of meaning quickly. And finally is querying. When you make a search, your query is also converted into a vector using the exact same model. The database then takes this query vector and using its super fast index, finds the vectors that are the closest to it. The database then returns the original items associated with those nearest neighbor vectors, and voila. This technology is the engine behind semantic search, which understands the intent behind your query. It also powers recommendation engines, which find products or content that are conceptually similar to what you like. It is used for image and audio search, allowing you to search with an image or have an app identify a song. And it is a critical component for the latest large language models, helping them give you more accurate answers. So to recap, vector databases convert everything into a numerical vector and then find the closest matches. Vector databases do not store data, they store meaning, allowing us to interact in a more human and intuitive way. They are the bridge between how computers read data and how we understand the world. If this video helped you finally understand vector databases, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more. Let us know in the comments below, have you used an application that you now suspect runs on a vector database? Thanks for watching Blackboard AI. See you in the next one.